You are now tuned in to a brand new episode of Get Real with Casey Kasem. It's the podcast taking a look behind the scenes of the fantasy football industry through interviews with some of your favorites in the business. On this episode, I was joined by Zach Reed of the Dynasty Dummies podcast. He shared with me the story of his mom listening to his podcast, his thoughts on live drafts, how he goes about watching film, what he'd choose to do a podcast about if Dynasty wasn't the topic he chose, having a creative writing degree, creating podcast opens, and a lot more. Make sure to follow Zach on Twitter if you aren't already at TacitAssassin13. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at TheCaseyCasem and the podcast at GetReal underscore pod. Get Real is a proud member of the DAP Network. And now, here's my conversation with Zach Reed on Get Real with Casey Kasem. Oh, I'm so excited to have another episode of this podcast come out. If you're listening to this podcast right now, surprise, we have somebody that we talked about in a previous episode. It hasn't even dropped yet, but I guess now if you're listening to this, it has dropped. Okay, that's really confusing. But anyway, we'll get into all that and more. Zach Reed, that is you. That and is you're getting real with Casey Kasem, that is me. And... uh Let's get real. Let's let, let's get real about fandom and s- in particular sports. Do you have a favorite team? Have you had a favorite team for a yes. while, or how did, how does that story go? So I am up in Maine, and so we have limited options this way. And so it was growing up watching the Patriots be terrible. You know, Rod, Rod Rust and the you know the the one in fifteen team. And and the Red Sox be terrible, and the Celtics be good for like a little bit, and then be terrible. And so that's that's where where I started. So I feel like I earned a little bit of the the fandom going forward. But but now I don't really follow team. We we get we're fantasy football, you know. So now it's yeah. it's following players, and I've always been kind of that way. I've never been a diehard. You know, it, it never breaks me up too much when when teams lose and it it's never too high when your team wins it's always been you know really admiring the players so right on right on <laughs> the patriots did you get a lot of crap from people when uh, you know the patriots are this dynasty right did you get all kinds of stuff or how did that go well, so I'm a very quiet Patriots fan. <laughs> so so I think a lot of people who who either listen to the podcast or or know me don't like that's not front and center. I'm I'm not going to be in your face with with that. So I don't take as much flack as I think what when people say Patriots fan, you have <laughs> and, and and like I totally get that because I I I kind of look at some Patriots fan side-eyed too. But so I, I don't take as much flack, but it's all good. <laughs> Cowboys fans get it too. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. yep, we're used to it. So yeah. it, it happens. Okay. So growing up, did you play sports? What what was your kind of relationship with sports like? Yeah. So it was, I was a, a baseball and basketball player primarily, and sports was always my avenue to have a relationship with my dad. So it it was, it was, yes, it was playing sports, but that was every conversation I've ever had in a meaningful way with my dad was either having a catch or, you know, in, in the gym with him rebounding for me and things like that. And, and actually I, I, I always kind of joke about this, but I I grew up in the shadow of my dad's in the main baseball hall of fame. He was an amazing player. Uh-huh. He coached for 30 years. He has over 400 wins at the high school level. And so I was kind of in this shadow of this larger than life man in a small town in, in Northern Maine, where like the road to the high school that I went to is named after my dad. So like going to school, you're going up Reed drive and it's a little, a little intimidating, but that was, that was the avenue I, I had to be able to connect with him was through sports. And were you expected to, did people just expect you to be good at sports because of your dad or, or were you just, how did that process go finding out that you were good at sports? Kind of a combo. So yes, they expected it, but also 
you have that the small town politics where people are like, oh, well, you're only playing because of your dad. And so it was this weird. He was always harder on me than he was anybody else. He was he was unfair to me even sometimes like he and I had some tumultuous uh, periods of time where like he would be unfair to me to make sure that he wasn't appearing as if he was favoring me. <laughs> and, and so it was a, it, it was, it was interesting anyway, growing up in that. And it's the staunch new England, you know, you, you don't talk about feelings and you don't talk about. And so that was, it was through sports. But. What positions did you play in each of the sports? Uh, so in basketball as a point guard, six, uh, one point guard, Northern Maine. That's fun. And, and in baseball, uh, in high school, I played shortstop and pitched. And then in college, I played center field and pitched. And after college, I pitched because they kind of winnow it down. Gotcha. So how did <laughs> they winnow it down? How did you find out about fantasy football? Not even fantasy football, because I know that you didn't play fantasy football to start with. So yeah. Uh, what was that whole experience learning out of play? Fantasy football is fun. I, I started off playing fantasy baseball and again, in a league with my dad, like his, he had a, a long standing, a dynasty league and they needed another, another player. And so I was in, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade. And, and I jumped in and did that. But fantasy football is such a different animal because you have smaller rosters you're only setting one lineup a week. And so I didn't really get into fantasy football. I dabbled in it in high school. And then I didn't play for the longest time. And really kind of getting serious into it was when I started doing the podcast with, with Kyle Lebrec, uh, who was my or, original co-host with the, the Dynasty Dummies. And it was I was doing a FedEx route. And I would stop and deliver. He was the manager at Radio Shack. And so I would deliver Radio Shack and we'd talk. And he's a he's a huge Pats fan. And so we talk a little bit about that. And then it got into fantasy football. And and so then I got invited to be in the Radio Shack League. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this, I I better I better know what I'm doing. And so I again started to listen to podcasts started following DLF and and had I've had a DLF subscription since 2014 so you know and and you know obviously you're listening to Matthew Barry and and at that point it was like fake pig skin and and so that was I I don't ever half do things I'm like I'm I'm in so that was that was what I did was I I started research because I wanted to be prepared but. And starting off, first of all, at, the, at a young age playing fantasy sports was pretty dope. And Dynasty is pretty dope. And the fact that it was uh, baseball is also like, <laughs> that's super cool too. Like just to see the, the journey and where you are and, and everything. And, and it was, that was a league where you would call in your lineup to the commissioner for the week. So you call it in and then on Tuesday – you would get an envelope delivered from spin stats, which was the stat service. So like it, this isn't online. This is not, uh, but, but we actually had a stat service that was, was paid for. And so we'd get, you know, in, in the mail, <laughs> your, uh, your stats for the week, which was, is kind of wild to think about now where, where now you're doing fantasy football and you're, you know, refresh, 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 and you're watching the games and you're trying to figure out, what your score is, it, it was not like you had to be a little bit patient with the. <laughs> <laughs> so, did I might have missed this, but did you, when you started playing fantasy football, was it dynasty first or was it redraft? So in, in high school, it was redraft because I, I like I'd never even heard of dynasty fantasy football and, and baseball to me was dynasty. Like that was <laughs> just how how it was played. And so we like we did leagues. I mean, we did everything it, because we were a little bit degenerate. You know, you have the all of the and I had a really cool it was 
it was really cool. We had a, uh, my school was a little less than 400 kids, my high school. And my graduating class, we had 12 or 14 really good athletes, both, both, uh, girls and guys. And we all kind of did whatever we could to, to, you know, hang out. And, and so we did all of these, we did hockey, which I have no idea about hockey. We did basketball, we did baseball, we did football. And, and so it was that we always had something going. So do you play uh, baseball now, fantasy baseball now? No, no. And, and uh, since I got caught up in the dynasty, like dynasty is all the time. And, and right now when baseball is starting is I'm looking at rookies coming in. Yeah. And and so I just I don't have the I haven't even I haven't watched a baseball game in such a long time outside of I took my youngest son uh Harrison to a, a Sea Dogs game this past year because it was Star Wars night. And so he <laughs> he got like full on Darth Vader and we got to go on, down on the field and then we watched the game and had had uh, sea dogs biscuits, the the ice cream bars, and and so it was it was great. And I miss baseball, but I'm just so much into fantasy football and 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 kind of keeping up with that that I don't I don't I don't do that anymore. <laughs> well, getting into dynasty and and finding that beast because it's it's a different world than playing redraft for sure for sure how did you come back into it and start playing dynasty so if you want somebody to blame it's john bosch and rich dotson uh because kyle and i were in a dm for a dynasty nerds mock draft and we've been kind of kicking around toying with with starting a podcast and we'd been playing in the in the dynasty league, the Radio Shack Dynasty League. And Kyle mentioned, oh, well, we might start a podcast. And Bosch immediately said, You you should. And then Rich Dotson was like, Yep, you need a host site, you need a microphone, you need this, you need that. And and so that was kind of the the runway that we needed to get off the ground. And that was back in 2015. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you were doing podcasts before a lot of people were doing podcasts. Yeah. So so Bosch had the Fantasy Insanity podcast. And that was the first podcast that I ever guessed it on, which was just I, I'd been listening to Bosch and loved it. And it was it was so much fun. But it was yeah, it was it was Bosch with Fantasy Insanity. It was fake pigskin. Obviously, uh, Matthew Barry had the, you know, the the uh, the fantasy you're in the 0610, you know, that the, <laughs> and and. But but then it was nerds and and DLF and I think Tim Keller and his buddy Kelly had the the Dynasty Red Zone, and then we came in right around the same time as as Dynasty Happy Hour, and so like there wasn't much. It was not a very crowded forum at that point. Yeah, that's like my golden era of listening <laughs> to podcasts. Where like all those podcasts you just listed, I'm like, yeah, man, nostalgia. Thinking about. List, just constantly listening to podcasts. Yeah, and, and that was the, that was the cool thing to me because I like you start listening and, and the more you listen and the more time you invest, they like the podcast hosts become like friends. Like you know, you're you're listening to them every week and you and you start to get their personalities down and you start to get the inside jokes, and then all of a sudden to come into Twitter and be interacting with Bosch, be interacting with Rich Dots and being interacting with Ryan McDowell and, and Scott Fish and, and interacting with all of these people that you have, you know, become friends with in this weird, like one-sided relationship to now all of a sudden be talking to them and interacting. It was so wild. It was great. So had you podcasted prior to actually podcasting or you guessed or did you wait to guest until afterwards? We, we, we did not, we just jumped into it. Like we, we did our first, uh, our first show, we were doing the, the 2015 draft class and, and we just kind of went full in, but, but no, I didn't guest on 
Bosch's show until, I mean, we were probably 10 or 15 episodes in and he did with the, the fantasy insanity, he did, a. it was, it was like a predict what would happen during the year. And you get to pick like five players that could beat ADP. Well, so he recorded back to back with Liz Loza and then me. And I'm like, John, <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. Like Liz is Liz is still to this day my all-time favorite analyst, period. And and so to go on a show after she did was just I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just <laughs> thinking about it now. Like she's oh, she's awesome. But yeah. Liz Loza, yeah, she's she is great. And I think she's one of the first people that not just women, but anyone respected, you know. So yeah, great to see that whole whole thing. But with you podcasting and going into it, and you had a co-host, you have co-host. Yep. Um, but to have a co-host with you, would you do you think you'd be able to do it all on your own? Or do you think having that co-host has been helpful or what do you think about solo podcasting too? So I've done some solo podcasts uh, because there was kind of an interim where Kyle at the beginning of the pandemic had uh, a lot going on with his life. And so he stopped doing the show. And then there was a kind of a, a between time before J Mike and I kind of decided it was, you had to be respectful of, of the, of the relationship between me and Kyle. And you had to, you know, you couldn't do the, the Hamlet, you couldn't serve the funeral uh, meets as cold cuts for the wedding, you know, that sort of thing. And so there was a, there was a break, but I think that two things, having a co-host keeps me honest and on track and, and making sure that I will, podcast every week and and put things out because when I was left to my own devices I only did a show when I had something I felt like was worthwhile to say and that's not a great way to get content out and if you're if your main goal is to drive clicks or drive listens you know having a podcast that may come out every 3 months may come out every 2 weeks but you don't really know is not a great way to do that and then the other piece of it is I've been really lucky. Kyle is one of the best hosts that I've ever seen. And J Mike, oh, uh, you know, Jay, like J yeah. Mike is unbelievable. And so they have both made me look way better than I have any right to be because they just sit there and set up softballs. <laughs> and, and I don't even have to do any work. They're just that good. And so to me, having a co-host, makes everything that much easier and that much better. And also like most of what I get out of this is interacting with people that I care about, that I love, like J Mike, I consider J Mike, my brother, Kyle, the same way, Russ Fisher, the same way. Like I've met so many people that I legitimately love and consider family and to have them co-hosting i'm going on with russ right after this and like i'm so excited just to see his face like i don't care what we talk about it's just it's that much fun for me and that that connection to have that you know you don't get that with a solo podcast you're just you're talking to your you know your your imaginary listener and and you're going as opposed to having a conversation and i think to me i i am better off as a conversationalist than I am as, as a, as a narrator, like JJ Zacharyson, unbelievable. Right. Like, like I, yeah. I could listen to him talk and even Peter Howard does it with his show and, and it's fantastic. I just don't quite have that monologue, that soliloquy ability that, <laughs> that they do. Yeah. And I mean, I guess if J Mike can keep, the open bar on track, then he can do anything. Right. So <laughs> he's so good. He's so, good. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. You were talking a lot about people in the fantasy football community and, and getting to know people. When did you, how did you exactly stumble across the whole world of the fantasy football Twitter that there is out there? Well, it was, again, when we started the podcast, we were like, we have to be on Twitter because that was how we were going to get the message out. As it turned out, the message didn't really get out, but we met a whole bunch of people that 
I mean, it's it's really awesome. And and I know we talked a little bit about this before in our DMs, but I don't consider myself. I know you 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 talk to people about being in the industry. Like I I don't consider myself in the industry. I'm industry adjacent, mm-hmm. but community centric. Like yes. I, I love this community, and I love you know you, you got on in, in our the first big retweet that we had was Ryan McDowell. And now, like, I spent probably an hour talking to Ryan at the, the Fantasy Football Expo last year. We just sit there and, and and talk and, like, and I still, it's still a little surreal. Like, it's still, like, it's Ryan McDowell and it's Scott Fish. But, you know, having the the interactions and having the community, and again, like I said, the the, the people that I've met, we have the the – the, a DM that was the the DFPN network, the 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 Dummies Funhouse podcast network, and it's it's Rush and J Mike and Joe Petrosino, who's FF Trader Joe, and Kyle and Matt Foreman and uh, uh, Sal Lido and Kevin Catillo and and Steve Marcus, who started the the fantasy football, the Scott Fish Podathon, like all of those guys, and you just. Again, it's a it's a family, and then all, Bosch and and Scott Fish and Ryan McDowell and Mike Fiella and Leo Pasiga and just all of Peter Howard, like all of these people that I never would have met, and you, like I never would have met you, and and uh, like I, yours is my favorite show, by the way, favorite the the open bar, <laughs> the open bar. You're you're kind of filling that while the open bar is on hiatus. Because to me, what you do and the way that you get down to the people, no other show does that. And that to me is the crux of it. Like that's what matters in all of this. Like fantasy football is fine. It's fun. It's a great game. And and a lot of people take it seriously. But if we back up and like look at, you know, the 30,000 foot view of what actually matters, it's the people. and, And that's absolutely what what you do with with this show and it's it, i i i know i i read you know i twitch out all the time but it's because i listen and i love it i love it and I, I love i love hearing about the guests i love getting to know like the a couple of weeks which is probably three or four weeks ago now but you had Gemmo, the icon on. oh yeah, yeah like he and i have have had minimal interaction on twitter I kind of walked by him at the expo and said hi but like listening to you and he talked and actually getting to know like that to me, I love because I get to meet people that I never, I never have interacted with. I don't know. Yeah. I, I thank you. You know, I appreciate that. Like it's so much fun to be able to talk to people and tell the, you know, have them tell their stories and kind of get it out to people because I get to talk to a bunch of people. I don't know either, you know, like I know you, but I don't know, you know, you, you know, right. and I, I like, there's some people I have come on here that I've never met and talked to at all in my entire life. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know? So (laughs) you bring up Jim and I'm like, well, I talk to him all the time. So, (laughs) but you know, uh, so I appreciate that. And I, I do appreciate the support too. Like it means so much. It really does. Well, and always like I, I will like from, from seeing you back in the, the open bar days to, to watching this show flourish, like it's it's great and I love it. I'll shout it from the rooftops. Oh man, you're the best, <laughs> and I appreciate that. And uh, this is such good warm feelings right now. You're talking about the community. You're talking about all these people that I'm like, oh my gosh, these are the people why are the reason why I started, you know, playing fantasy football, playing dynasty fantasy football, getting involved with people on Twitter, like talking to. It was just, it's just such a cool community. It's such a cool group of people. Absolutely. And, and I, like, I hear people talk now and they're like, well, I have bad interactions on Twitter and I, you know, it's Twitter's not the same and it's probably true, but I don't have that. Right. And and not to be, it's not that I'm special, but like the people that I interact with are all like really, really fun. And they're, they're there for that community and and to me, that's what pops for me. And that's why I'm still doing podcasts and still on Twitter. Like I'm not making any money doing this, but I get so much intrinsic value from 
this community and all of the, the people in it. It's great. And in real life, quote unquote, real life, I mean, I don't have any friends that I'm going to talk about fantasy football with constantly. They do not want that <laughs> in their lives. Do not want that in their lives. So, yeah, like it's just it's it's just nice to have a place that you can go and talk to people. Absolutely. <laughs> so you brought up Scott Fishbowl, which is another big thing when it comes to the community. And it's an amazing event. Obviously, if, if you don't know what the Scott Fish Bowl is, you need to go check it out. Scottfishbowl.com. Sign up. The charity aspect of this is huge. It's huge. And it's such a wonderful place to meet people, to interact with people. Talk, just talk, you know? So how many years have you been in? Do you know how many years you've been in the Scott Fish Bowl? Yep. So I was in the 480 satellite. And so it's been since then, and again, like you, you saw kind of the rumblings on Twitter and, and that hype build to a crescendo, and, and it was great. And I was like, okay, I need to be a part of this, even if I'm not in the league. Like that, that is kind of adjacent. Like this is such an amazing thing, and to see – the the donations raised and to s- just see it snowball. I mean, you you talk about from from SFB 480 to now the the size of the donation that you know Scott and the community is is able to put together. It's it's funny. We we I think we need that somebody to galvanize the community, somebody to to be out ahead and say you know follow me. And then the community is really, really good about doing that and following and and all of the all of the good that comes out of it. And so that like watching that was what really kind of cemented me as a like a member of the community. And I was like, this is great. Like this is unbelievable. And so you have you know the Scott Fishbowl, and then. Kevin and Sal and Steve started the potathon, and then that got big. And then Bosch started doing the Eliminator Leagues, and that got big. And it just keeps going. And now you have the the Avi makers who, you know, every year you got to get in and, and get that avatar with the the fresh look and and the Scott Fishbowl, whatever whatever division you're in. And so it just and then last year with the live drafts, I mean, and and again this year, like I get to do. I'm really lucky, but I get to do the Boston live draft. And so I get to go down and hang out with Leo Pasiga and Mike Fiella and, and Bob Gilchrist and, uh, you know, Coop and just like all of these people that you interact with on Twitter. And that's cool. But you also get to have this live draft, which is awesome, but also the community coming together and, and gathering in a space. And I actually just went down to Portsmouth, New Hampshire this past weekend and had breakfast and lunch with Leo and Mike Fiala and Mike Reedy and Bob Gilchrist, like all because of fantasy football, all because of the Scott Fishbowl, all because, you know, we have this shared interest in this community. And then all of a sudden it blossomed and it's a, it's a friendship and we're meeting up in real life. It's not just your, your crazy internet friends. It's like actual <laughs> real people. It's great. What are your family and friends think about <laughs> this whole world that you're involved in it, it's my my immediate family is fantastic about it my wife is very understanding and it's a good thing because if she wasn't i i couldn't do this like she doesn't care at all about fantasy football but she uh really cares about it's something that i can do that's an outlet and and uh, the friends that i've made and it's I, I don't want to tell tales out of school, but like Russ Fisher is uncle Russ to my kids. And every now and then we'll get a package in the mail and it will be from uncle Russ and they'll be all excited and it'll be like a Lego set or it'll be puzzles or it'll be something, you know, and it's just like that, that aspect of it, I think they get. And so to me, having that through fantasy football is awesome and I, I just, my mother, I know this is wild. My mother, the other day, 
she had, she'd been on a trip. She'd been to California on vacation and she messages me out of the blue. And she's like, did you sing that? Cause I do the parody opens for every show. She's like, did you sing that song this week? And I was like, what you're listening to my podcast. Like what you don't, and she's like, well, yes. And I was like, well, yeah, that was that was me. Uh, <laughs> she's like, you did all of that. I was like, yeah. It was a it was a Gaston. It was yes. uh, yeah. Oh my and, gosh, I was gonna bring that up. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, and she was like, I, I I couldn't. It didn't sound like you. And I said, well, I did I did the voice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So for people who haven't listened to your podcast. First of all, what exactly is the podcast about? And then second, I, what what made you decide that th those kind of openings were how you were going to go? <laughs> so the, the podcast is Dynasty Dummies, and we have kind of prided ourselves on being wrong and accepting the fact that we're all going to be wrong and trying to figure out the best best path to mitigate failure. And oftentimes that is listening to other people. Oftentimes that's pointing out that Peter Howard is brilliant or that, you know, somebody else has a, a great, you know, David Wilsey is scouting running backs and, and he's amazing at it or, you know, whatever it is, whatever piece. And so we focus a lot on that and we focus a lot, uh, stop me if you heard this, but on people, because I think the biggest edge in your dynasty league is not, uh, the strategy about the players, because everybody has that. Everybody has the same information about these players, if you want it. I mean, everybody can subscribe to DLF or everybody can subscribe to uh, the Dynasty Trade Calculator, or, and you can all listen to all the podcasts, and you could be on Twitter, and so you get the same information. But what edges there are now, I think, is understanding the people in your league, how they're approaching things, and how you can use that to navigate either trading or drafts, or that, you know, that sort of thing. And so we're a little bit different. We're a little bit, uh, a little bit niche as, as which is funny as a dynasty podcast, because dynasty is already niche. And so we're like a niche <laughs> niche. It's we're, we're way off the page. And then the, <laughs> the opens initially were to annoy Kyle. Oh. Like that was, that was <laughs> and, no, like, so we built the, the studio. We had a studio, Kyle and I used to record, together in studio and we built a, his daylight basement. And so uh, we're building the studio. And in my head, I get this to the tune of Beverly Hills, Weezer, Jeremy Hill. And so we're sitting there and I'm going, <laughs> you know, Jeremy Hill, to Jeremy Hill. And he's just like, he'd start humming. And I'm like, okay, I got you. I got the earworm. And so from there, it was just a matter of, okay, what can I do? And it's a creative outlet. Like I have a, I have a degree in creative writing. I was, believe it or not, if you've heard me sing, you probably don't believe it, but I was in chorus and show choir in high school. And my freshman year, the, the show choir was third in the nation. Nothing. I didn't do anything. I was just doing the, you know, old man river, but that we had, we had three, girls who ended up on Broadway in, in various performances. So they were amazing. And I just kind of rode coattails, but I get to kind of combine that creative writing with singing and nobody can tell me I can't cause it's my podcast. So I, <laughs> I just kind of, I just kind of open, open the show. I do one a week. I've done over 200 uh, and I've done opens for other people's shows too, which is kind of, it, that's always a little bit of a trip to hear like when when Peter Howard comes in with the the theme song for the grind or uh it used to be uh fantasy game or dynasty game night used to do that you know have one of my open and it was that's always a little bit weird but when it's when it's my show I'm just like I'm having fun with it you know <laughs> you're gonna have to deal with it and if not you can press that you know fast forward 15 second button four times and you're through it it's only a minute yeah. You're right. I mean, you guys do it through the ads anyway, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but okay, so podcasting and coming up with topics for things to talk about on the show. How do you guys kind of work that out? <laughs> we don't show sheet. 
we just kind of go. We, we have uh, an idea, like something will be kicking around in either my head or J Mike's head that we think ought to be fleshed out. And then we just start talking about it and, and flesh it out. And sometimes I'll have like a, an open, uh, like this, this past week, I, I know a bunch of people are struggling with mental health. And so this, this past week, I opened up talking about how, it's a good idea to reach out to people. It's a good idea to to talk. Uh, it's a good idea to kind of peel back the the onions a little bit. And, and we do this, especially now, because we don't want to put our issues on anybody else because it's been a, the last three years have been rough for basically yeah. everybody. And But I think that, you know, to me, you're doing yourself a disservice you're doing everybody around you a disservice if you're internalizing and you're keeping that stuff inside and so it's been really on the forefront of my mind and so I started out the show with that this past week it's not always like that like some sometimes I'll have something that I've been reading and we'll talk about it or you know sometimes J Mike will have something on his mind and and we'll go but but it's not we're not as kind of set and prepared i don't want to say prepared but we're, we're not prepared we're we're kind of an off the cuff we're kind of a okay what what is in the moment that we need to get out and and talk about but also how is this going to help you with your fantasy team so and right now it's pretty easy because we're doing rookies we got the dynasty dummies hoot nanny which is that that's my that's that's a fun time of of year because i get to you know, dive into all the rookies and talk with Jay, Mike and, and Matt Foreman and get their uh, estimation of, of what they see on film. And we see how it jives with mine. And, and so this is, this is a fun time of year where we kind of know what we're talking about, but during the, during the rest of the off season and during the regular, you know, in season stuff, it's kind of whatever comes up that we think is going to be, either beneficial to our listeners or be something that maybe they haven't been thinking about, because I, I think it's important to be getting perspectives from all over the place, because how do you know what you think is the best way if you don't hear the other, you know, the other sides of it. And when you're watching film, cause you brought up watching film, how do you determine one day, hey, I'm going to start watching film. Like, what was the story of starting to watch film? So I, Nick Whalen, who did the Devi report from, from way back, and the FF Ghost, who did the Orange report, both were really, really good film evaluators. And they put out, you know, these, these PDF-like books. And so that's when I first started playing Dynasty, I was like, well, I got to get in on Rookies. And so I would start, I would buy their, their material. And so I would, I would figure out what they're seeing and, and I'm like, okay, well, I kind of have an idea. Maybe I'm going to start doing this a little bit for myself. And so I kind of took their processes and then tweaked it for what I wanted to do and just went from there. And eventually I think the first time I actually put anything out for public consumption was in 2017. And Jake Anderson, I know you know Jake, but yeah. Jake Anderson was the first person who who commented and he said, you know, I really like how accessible you're making these profiles. And I was like, that's exactly, and I hadn't even thought about it, but that's what I wanted to do was, was to watch this, but then break it down into something that I, you know, I could give to people and and have them understand what i'm seeing i don't need to be you know technical and we don't need to you know spider two why banana like we don't need to 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 talk about you know cover two and tampa two and the different you know to me watching it from the fantasy football lens and being able to pull it back into something simple was was nice and it also gave me a little bit more control over 
what I was doing in my rookie drafts because I don't play in 30 leagues. I play in five leagues. And so for me to be able to look at rookies and figure out what I'm going to do, it, it, it gives me a little bit of, I don't know if it's an advantage, but it makes me feel better. Do you, in those five leagues, do you have any redraft leagues or do you play any I, redraft leagues? The only redraft league I play is the fishbowl. And, and it's not, it's not, I'm not anti redraft league. I just am so caught up in dynasty and a, and a dynasty mindset that when I am in redraft leagues, I end up with, you know, a whole bunch of young players. And I'm like, well, this isn't a very good redraft team. This is it's a great <laughs> dynasty startup, but it's hard for me to flip that switch. And so I do the, I do the fishbowl and I like, I love, I'll, I'll read redraft content because I think that there's a real big advantage to being in the know about what the, what the redraft side of things is saying. Because you can find some real nice iniquities. If you look at Dynasty ADP and you look at Redraft ADP, all of a sudden you can find, if you're a competitive team, some places where there are some points being undervalued. So it's not a it's not an anti-redraft. It's just a it's a different mindset, and it's hard for me to go back and forth. Yeah, I was going to ask about switching your brain over for the Scott <laughs> Fish Bowl because it's already hard enough. Like. The, the wrinkles that get thrown oh. in there. And then on top of that, yeah, to go from dynasty to something that's redraft is it's gotta be a little difficult. It, it is, but it's fun. I mean, like yeah. Scott fishball is so much fun. And right. it was, it was an even bigger wrinkle last year because you're drafting live. So not only do I have to like <laughs> switch over to redraft, but I don't have the, the luxury of, being able to spend, you know, six hours on the clock. It's, it's okay. We, I got to make a pick because I'm on the clock and I, I drafted from the, the one spot. So now I'm on the, on the clock for two picks in a row. Every yeah. time, you know, it's like, whoa, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, now that's like an extra layer of anxiety that I didn't know existed, <laughs> but I'm, I mean, I'm going to try to go to a live draft this year oh, so um, it's so much okay fun. yeah because i was going to ask you more about that because it's it is intriguing to me i've had some people on who have attended and have told me nothing but amazing things but to not actually have done that i don't know the experience exactly how it would feel so what was your experience like doing that so i think you have to go into it with kind of the mindset that you're it's a charity draft and so there's not the weight of you didn't put 50 or 100 or $200 down. It's, it's you donated 50 or 100 or $200 to Fantasy Cares. And so that's you don't have the weight of the, the pressure of, of having to, to win the league. And it, it's a little bit to me like a mini Fantasy Football Expo because you have all of these people there who – are either on the on the Twitter side in the community or people who just love fantasy football and, and everything that the charity aspect means. And so you get all those people together in, in one place and then you just have at it and, and you draft. And, and I had <laughs> – I didn't tell him until it was probably four or five rounds in because Bob Gilchrist was using my draft list. I just printed them off in alphabetical order. And so like the first three guys he drafted who had like a last name of C and I'm like, you, you may want to maybe just, you know, flip the page a little bit because, because I, I printed them off in, in alphabetical order, but it's, it was so much fun. And at least at the Boston draft, like it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of pressure. There were a lot of laughs uh, and, and a lot of smiles and a lot of stories you had Mike Fiella come up behind Coop in uh, in about the eighth round of of the draft, and and you knew that Coop was going to take Mike Evans coming back around, and Mike had the pick before him, and he walked up to Coop, put his hand on his shoulder, and whispered in his ear, "I'm taking Mike Evans. I mean, uh, I'm taking uh, Evan Ingram, and there's nothing you can do about it." And it was just like you could see Coop's face draw, and it was just so much fun, like all of this stuff was so much fun and yeah. you don't get yeah. that 
if you're if you're not in a in a live draft. So it's it's worth going. It's it's so much fun. Yeah, I can't even imagine that being like someone's first live draft ever, like to get to experience that and that be that's like probably like the gold standard. So yeah. I I really hope that I can get out to one because it looks like fun. Yeah, yeah. And you brought up the fantasy football expo as well. And that is an event that is super awesome that we talk about a lot on this show. Just I know that some people aren't interested in it, but for those of us that are like beyond interested in it uh, what has your experience been like with the expo amazing amazing and if you think you're not interested in it but you're listening to this show you're interested in it like you, <laughs> you really are like so the first year i went out i was expecting to go out one year get my fill of it and and be done mm -hmm. so and, and russ fisher dynasty outhouse he and i had kind of talked about it and we weren't sure if we we're going to go. We were kind of hemming and hawing. And finally, I was like, look, Russ, I will drive down to New Jersey. I will pick you up. We will drive out. We'll get a hotel room together. If we get overwhelmed, if if it's just too people-y sometime, if there's, we can go back and hang out. Like, you, I, you've got me and I've got you and we'll do that. And we got out there and it was just amazing. And I know I've I've listened to you and, and guests talk about how it was like scrolling Twitter in real time. It That's what it was, but it, it was all of the community and none of the trolls. And it was just amazing. And so you have that, that first year, you just got a taste. And I was like, okay, well, we need to go back. And, and so now like we booked our, our room and got our tickets the day it went live this year. So we're like, we're, we're all set to go. And again, I'm driving down to New Jersey where I'm taking extra days on either side so we can get out and, and enjoy the festivities and kind of get set up. And, and so it, it really was, and you interact with everybody, but you can also kind of cultivate that, you know, who you're going to interact with for long periods of time, because everybody's there. And mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I had, and I, I know I, I've seen you say that you had a couple of negative interactions, but by and large, I, I did not have very many, and you can kind of avoid them. And, and mm -hmm. next, next time, Casey, you just, you just <laughs> say something, Ru Russ and J. Mike and I, we got to, Thank you, you know, we'll, we'll do the <laughs> offensive line. So I only had one issue and it was, right. it was fine but i thought yeah. i should put it out there that it's not all fun and games so but yeah. like you said you can you can get around you know hang out with your your boys hang out with your homies and uh yeah hang out with the people you want to hang out with and it's i promise you you're gonna have a blast if you go i met so many new people that i didn't even know before going yeah. there too and, and the the cool thing to me is like the the actual expo like the sunday expo is not even the best part. Like it's great. And mm -hmm. and it's really cool to be able to go see everybody's booths and, and all the content, you know, creators and, and that, but you get the, the first night where you're out in the park, you know, in Centennial square and Centennial Plaza and, and you get all of that interaction. And then you get the next night where you're at the hall of fame, you know, just all of this, even outside of, and and then there were people that did karaoke on the Sunday night after the expo at, at this little dive bar. Like there's so much going on and so many great people. And, and you have this common bond of fantasy football, but then you start to realize that there's so much else there too. And, and so it's, it's just so much fun. And I kind of went into it thinking it'd be weird to meet all these people that I knew from the <laughs> internet, but I've never really like sat down and talked, you know, I, this is different than like standing next to somebody and having a conversation with a group of people. It's completely different, but it's actually not scary. It's it, for me, it wasn't, I don't know if you had any experience where you were like just overwhelmed, but <laughs> I felt like it was normal. Like I'd see these people every day. Yeah. It, it's, it really was cool because you get like everybody i mean you start you you know this you know that these are just people they're not they're it's not but then when you actually get there and you're like 
oh, well, wait, there's Denny Carter. And you walk up and talk to Denny or, you know, whoever it is. And you're just like, this is really cool. And for me, and I, I think that this gets lost sometimes because I a lot of times fans see the expo and they think it's for the content creators. It's not. <laughs> it's for everybody. It's for yeah. the entire community. And some of my favorite interactions were with people who are, are – Air, air grammar just fans and and that was it was so much fun to meet people who are like i listen to you or to geek out with people that you know heath cummings is walking by or marcus grant is walking by you know that 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 to me is so much fun to to interact with everybody not just the content creators not you know it's such a it's such a community event and and to me that's what that's what it's all about and it's got this real kind of carryover scott fishbowl vibe like it's got that whole that whole feel and it's it's great and i think that's what this community does and what this community is about is just those vibes i feel like you're the perfect fit for this show, for the, for being a guest on the show, because that, yeah, the vibes, like, I, yes. And that's in the community that, I, yes, people, I think sometimes when I'm just talking to my friends about this and that, no, if there's a community and we're not like elbowing each other, trying to get to the top, we're kind of just supporting each other and bringing each other up. And they're like, what? That's your competition. So, it, it, <laughs> and that type of I just don't think in that mindset, you know. Well, and I'm I'm that way. I don't, I tweeted out a, last week. Like I am terrible at Twitter, terrible, because I don't hot take, I don't play for clicks, I I don't promote myself. I'm horrible at self promotion, but I'm really good at promoting other people who do good work, and that's not necessarily what Twitter is about. But by losing Twitter, I actually win. Because I end up with all of these people, you know, around me as a community and, and all of these friends that I've met. And, and the fantasy community, yes, there is that competition some. There is that, you know, it is a business. Right. But there's also a really, really great, and it starts from the, the people who are the the OGs, it starts with Bob Harris and it starts with Scott Fish and Ryan and and all of these people who are are willing to lift. I mean, Liz, willing to lift up other people and, you know, interact and and promote work. Matt Harmon, same thing, like all of these people who have made it are willing to give back and willing to talk to and help out other people and if you've got uh, the upper stratosphere that is that way, I mean, he, Heath Cummings is the first person uh, to to jump on the potathon. Like he's in Sal's DMs every year. As soon as Sal's like, we're going to go get guests, and and to have people up at that top that are that willing and to to give their time and to to show people the way and lift people up. Then, then how can you not have that all the way through? And it's awesome. And the potathon, yeah, that is something that is just incredible to see oh, and yeah. see how it's grown. And I know you've been a part of it. What exactly is the potathon, and how is seeing so many different people come through there? Well, it's so cool because it was it was. Sal Lido and Kevin Cotillo and Stephen Marcus, and it was their brainchild way back. I think it was SFP seven, and it was it wasn't even twenty four. I think it was twelve hours when they started the first one, and and then it got bigger. And this past year, it was thirty six. And the first year that they did it, they were begging people to come on. Uh, Kyle and I came on and filled, I don't know, it was like two, two and a half hours, just come on and, and help them out talk. And, and this past year, you're they're having to break it into half an hour segments to, to get everybody in, in 36 hours. And, and this year, I think it's going to be even better because uh, Scott Fish and Bob Gilchrist and, and some other people behind the scenes have really worked to, so fantasycares.org is now a, a bona fide 
charity organization. So it's a nonprofit charity organization, which means now that the bigger companies can donate, get the tax write off, which means that you're going to see more money to fantasy cares, more money to, ch to charity. And you're going to see that with the pot -a -thon too. And it just to see it go from, you know, Sal, Kevin and Steve to the entire community embracing this and supporting it and pouring love and donations into it has been just amazing. Yeah, I, it, it amazes me every year. Yeah, how big it, it just gets bigger and bigger. I, yeah. I just can't even imagine like how it's going to be in a few years. It's just I know, wow. it's awesome. <laughs> well, and and like this this past year, uh, Dave Wright and Mike Fiella and uh, you know obviously Sal was a part of it, but but they had such a a big group of people working behind the scenes to get it uh, to get it off and and to be successful because it's gotten that big and so it's it's super cool to see though and and there was never any i mean or not much mention of of those guys behind the scenes right but they were there doing as much work as as sal was hosting it oh man <laughs> and then that, that all sounds like a lot of work and <laughs> yeah Oh, I can't even. Yeah. And I, and you know, it's, it's really cool because a lot of the people that live in different time zones coming on to fill in, you know, and do all that. And it's just like, wow, you can, you can go on there and see the Australian, you know, people and <laughs> you can Aussie, go on there and you can the see Aussie guys with the, the Aussie guy. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So you said you went to college for creative writing. So do you write? Do you do any writing? <laughs> so uh, I, I do my, I, I I just finished up uh, twenty two thousand words on rookies. Does that does that count? That that go unpublished. They're just in a document on my phone. I don't write for a site. So if you ask me about a rookie, I'll I'll send you a screenshot of of my write up. But uh, but no, I I don't, and I wish I did. That's the that's the one thing because now I am in my real job, actual job. Um, I do marine design and engineering for General Dynamics, so I'm I'm working on destroyers, like big ships, which has nothing to do with creative writing, and I miss that. I mean, that's that's why I'm doing the podcast. It's why I do fantasy football stuff. It's why I do the songs. I have that creative outlet, but I really miss writing, and and I I love fiction, and I've got a story brewing that I need to go back and work because my boys are right at the age where it would be perfect. It's kind of like that early, uh, not quite young adult, but pretty close fiction. And I really need to get back and do that. But where do you find the time? Yeah, you don't, you just don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. So are your kids into fantasy sports? Are they like fantasy football? <laughs> uh, my oldest, Caleb, is uh, nine, and he is autistic, and he likes the names, but he doesn't care about – so he'll he, – I, I don't know if you've seen the clip that I have of him pronouncing to his full name. But no, I, I don't think – I think I missed that. But. So so whenever anybody mispronounces it, I'll just – I have a I have a video, and I'll just drop it in, and – and he did the same thing with Okwebunam. He was like, no, it's Okwebunam, and people pronounce it wrong because he looked it up. Like he, he'd get on YouTube and, and find him pronouncing it. But they're not into the fantasy sport. Like it, on Sunday, they'd be like, oh, dad, you're watching, dad. you know. But, <laughs> but they are really into reading, which, I mean, obviously that's my other passion with with creative writing and so i will read to them so i harrison seven i don't know so they're right in that real sweet spot where there's a lot of really good fi the fiction for kids that age and so we just we read the whole series of harry potter it was oh. awesome we just started the chronicles of narnia we've got uh the lightning thief on tap so like we're just kind of going we did uh, matilda they in between harry potter and chronicles of narnia we did matilda they loved that and they they like to find books that have the potential of seeing a movie when ah. they're done so you have that little carrot but they 
I mean, they love it. And it for me, it's awesome. Like, that's my favorite. I get an hour at the end of my day. It doesn't matter how bad I've had uh, of a day at work. I know that I'm going to get that hour before they go to bed where I get to read to them and just watch their faces as they're imagining what's going on. And, you know, they'll stop and ask questions. And, and it's just it's this beautiful hour that's just perfect to end end the day. Everything else is gone. Well, oh, it's good. That it, yeah, it's nice to have something to look forward to. And yeah. and that is sounds like a delightful thing to look forward <laughs> to. My my wife's rereading the Harry Potter books, and so she'll read a book and then we'll watch the movie. I've never seen the movies. I never read the books, so I haven't. I've read the first book and I've watched all, oh, I think we still have the last two movies. I think she's on the last book. So, <sighs> but it is, it's nice. And to be able to have somebody that you can read it with, you know, that enjoy it just as much as you do is it's fun. Yeah. I get to, I get to pass that on. It's nice. <laughs> what else do you like to do when I know finding time is hard, but when you have time and, and you want to do something fun, what do you like to do? I mean, it's, it's literally like the kids, like it, when whatever they want to do it's it's building legos it's they they've been on a they just discovered pokemon go which <laughs> like i was not a pokemon kid but they have discovered pokemon go and so we'll go on walks where yesterday we went on a two and a half mile walk because they wanted to go there's a pokey stop in the the south end of town and so we just went for a walk and like anything that I can do to spend time with them is gravy. I mean, that's, that's pretty much, and, and I know that's kind of, I'm, I'm the, the middle-aged guy with two kids. So that's kind of what you do. I mean, it's, but for me, it's so much fun. Like I never knew before I met my wife, I kind of had resigned myself that I wasn't going to have kids and I was okay with that. And now after having them like i can't imagine i can't imagine not living for them which is weird to say but it it's true it's it's such a different it's such a different mindset than i had you know 10 years ago <laughs> well i hope that if my dad was ever on our podcast I, he would never have been able to be on a podcast at your age but if he was able to i would hope that he would have a response like that to the question of what do you like to do for fun <laughs> but okay so what about like with dynasty leagues if somebody is just now getting interested in playing dynasty and they are a little a little scared or a little you know, they're just, they just want to test the waters. They're not really sure. <laughs> what, what kind of advice do you have for newbies before they get started playing Dynasty? Ask, ask questions, and and especially get like get on Twitter and just ask questions to people on Twitter because everybody will answer, or a lot of people will will answer, and and you kind of get that feeling. And I would also say. And, and maybe this is a little bit of a cheat, but find a good commissioner. And if you can get in a league that Russ Fisher commissions, if you can get in a Dynasty Outhouse League, do that. Because he is an absolute peach of a human being and an even better commissioner. And, and I, I think most of my leagues at this point, I think three out of, three out of my five leagues are, are Russ leagues. And he will be welcoming. He'll be warm. And you know, and this is my big thing, there are going to be good people in those leagues. And mm -hmm. that's that's what – so I don't care about settings. And and if I were a, a, giving advice to a new player, I would, like, find a vanilla league. Don't don't get in one that's, you know, got, you know, 100 bench spots or, or taxi squads or – uh, IDP or crazy, like try to find a vanilla league because you get your feet wet and then you will want more. I like, that's just what yeah. dynasty does, but find a league that has good people in it. I mean, can, you're, you're in at least two, maybe three of my leagues. Like that's, that's the first thing I ask. Someone's like, do you want to be in a dynasty league? I'm like, 
who's in it. Who's in it? Because you know, I, I want to be in that league that's going to be fun. You know, yep. it's going to be a, an an active chat, but not necessarily a cutthroat chat. It's going to be a fun group to to play with, and and that's what I that's what I want at this point. I mean, maybe ten years ago I would have been different, but now it's like I, I'm in it for the people. I'm in it for the the community and the the type of league doesn't matter as much. I'll co- I'll co-sign Russ for uh, like he commissions all of my the leagues that I'm in. I'm in three dynasty leagues. Like you you were saying, yep. we're in leagues together, and yeah, he's my only commish. So That's definitely awesome. can co-sign that. This isn't like sucking up to Russ or anything. <laughs> this is just putting facts out there you know so that's just how it goes do, do you or have you played in any keeper leagues or tried did, any of that kind of stuff i went right into dynasty, dynasty. here we are and i've mm-hmm. i've been here ever since and that is and, and that's just a and that's probably something when people you tell people that they're like what you didn't you've never played i mean you didn't play dynasty or redraft you played dynasty first that's that I can't see, I can't even get the words right because my head can't wrap itself around that. And that's crazy. <laughs> what when you're looking at leagues, though, is there something that you are a big fan of in leagues, like a setting or some? I know that it doesn't really matter, but is there something that makes it maybe a little more fun or something that you've seen that's you just uh, well, whatever? <laughs> I, I I enjoy what Scott has done, Scott fish has done to kind of nerf the quarterback position. And I know that sounds weird, but, but I came in playing mostly one quarterback leagues. So like my first couple of dynasty leagues were one quarterback leagues. And I always, I would go back and forth with John Bosch because he, you know, he loves the, the super flex and Ross loves the super flex. And I said, you know what? I don't want to have to think about AJ McCarron. Like that's my, <laughs> that's my litmus test. And so with super flex leagues, you end up with this artificial inflation of the quarterback values of objectively bad quarterbacks. Like, you know, it, it's all of a sudden the, the quarterbacks down at the bottom tier are worth first round picks. And so what Scott has done, and I know it wasn't his I- idea, like it wasn't his brainchild there. And Addison Hayes has done some with this too, but like the quarterback premium and and nerfing the quarterbacks with, uh, you know, either completion percentage or the negative six for a, a t- interception for a touchdown and four negative four for interception, like that sort of thing. I really enjoy that. I know it's not for everybody because – everybody wants to score points. And if you're taking points away from the position that scores the most points, it's a little, but, but that's my, that's my favorite thing. And, and even the one quarterback leagues that I play in have that kind of striation, that, that quarterback premium. Touching back on going back to watching film, just cause I want to know how much time do you spend with a player? Like how many games do you watch? What is that process like? So too much. <laughs> I, I am watching between eight and 12 games of every player that I watch because I, I chart. And so for me, it, I need to have a big enough sample that I can go back and look and see what they did well and what they did poorly. Because a, a lot of people get caught up in highlight scouting. So like you see or and, and we want to dream like we want these players. I want all these players to be great. So it's easy to watch somebody make plays on a on a highlight reel and get excited about them. But for me, if I chart a couple of games early in a career, a couple of games middle of the career, and then like six or seven games toward the end of the career in college, I get to see progression. I get to see them fix mistakes if they're going to. And to me, the NFL is not a developmental league. So if you can watch a player identify their weaknesses and then fix them in college, they have a pretty good foundation to be able to continue to get better in the pros. Whereas if I'm just watching a couple of games and I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's good. 
I may not get to see all that. So it it's a little bit of diminishing returns. Like I probably watched too much, but it has worked really well. For, like I have 80% roster ship of Justin Jefferson. I have a 60% roster, roster ship of AJ Brown. And if you look at the top four receivers that I have uh, looked at over the past, you know, since 2017, my top four wide receivers also happen to be the top four wide receivers in Dynasty ADP right now. And so I, my process is is working for me. It's probably not for everybody. And it is, I'm sure there's a ton of luck involved too. There is with everything. I'm not saying I've got it. I am a dummy. I, I put that right out there. That's that's the the dynasty dummies. That's my my uh, disclosure of I don't know everything, but that's how I do. Uh, that's how I do what I do with rookie scouting. Do you know how many players you actually look at, or is it probably too many to count? Two, well, this this year we are at f- like fifty nine or sixty already. Wow, which is a ton. Well, yeah. I start I start before Thanksgiving and I just I spend I, I this is this is the period like that from Thanksgiving until April. I it's, I really have to make sure I carve out time every night for family, because if not, I'm just going to get completely swallowed up by by rookie film. And do you watch a lot of football or and besides just watching the film? But do you watch a lot of NFL or how is watching a game with you as well? So I'll, I'll watch, I'll watch NFL. Um, usually I watch red zone because that's what matters to, to fantasy. But if there is either an Island game or a game that I think is going to be really good, I'll, I'll watch that. I don't watch college football on purpose because I don't <laughs> want to, I don't want to have any idea about these players. I, and, and that's something that I do. So from, Basically, September until, well, I'll start after the draft. I'll start listening to other people's content. But I don't want to hear anybody else's takes on these players until I've watched them. Because uh-huh. I don't I don't want to have that coloring what I see. I try to be, and you can't be objective because film is inherently subjective. But I want it, I want it to be my, as objective as I can be, my opinion and then I'll kind of come out of my cone of silence and, and start listening to, to other people. And, and I find it really valuable to listen to people who do things differently than I do. So, again, Peter Howard, uh, David Wilsey, uh, FF Bean Counter, like all of these guys who come at it from a metric perspective, because I don't do that. I do the film. And the cool thing about the, the metrics and the analytics is – they can cast this huge net because they get they can scrape data from all of these players and so they can get get eyes on people that i would never even see because i you know i'm not watching 200 players i i can't and so they'll do that and then i'll go listen and i say oh i need to watch this guy and i need to watch this guy and i need to watch this guy because these players, these these analysts that I really respect and and value, are saying these players have potential, and so I get to I get to do my like single line fishing after they've already cast this broad net, which is is kind of fun. <laughs> I, I cheat a little bit that way. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I just listen to all of you guys and just take it all in because. Yeah. So with the draft coming up, I'm sure that's a super exciting time in your life. Uh, how's being a dynasty mind and getting to the draft? What is the lead up to the draft like? It well, it's it's man, it's busy because I'm I'm trying to get all of these players watched before that happens because the draft capital is the last piece. It's the the time that the NFL can't lie to us. It's the one time, and and they can't they you know. All the way up through. Oh, yeah. Isaiah Pacheco, he's going to get a ton of playing time. You know, all of this. All the way through the season, they lie. And then you get the draft, <laughs> and they say, okay, this guy's worth a second-round pick. And you're like, ha-ha, okay. And and so they invest the capital. And I don't I don't know if you've seen 
I saw it with uh, Peter Howard posted this and somebody else had posted it, but it's something to the effect of 70% of fantasy relevant players are drafted in the first three rounds of the NFL draft. And part of that is because the good players are drafted there. But the other part of it is the NFL invests the, the draft pick, the capital and, and the, the commensurate money with the, with a pay scale which means that if they're investing a, a top three round pick, those players are going to get more chances to succeed. And when they fail, they're going to get more chances to get back on the horse and, and, and succeed after. And so there's just this real big you know, push from the NFL teams to like, we made this pick. You need to be good, you know, go do something. And so I think that a, a lot of, a lot of, Dynasty players want to find the next big thing. They want to find the guy nobody's got. Everyone talks about sleepers. That's only 30% of, of players. So if you're betting outside the first three rounds, you know, you better hope that that you get lucky. Catch that, catch that lightning in a bottle. Wow. You just blew my mind there. Like it just makes sense. I know. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, Zach, before we go, I have a question about podcasting. And if you were doing a podcast that was not a fantasy football related podcast, but you had to choose some other topic to be all no knowledgeable about, or at least <laughs> a little bit knowledgeable about, uh, but what would you, what kind of topic would you go after for a podcast? That's a really good question. I think that I would do a, I don't know if I'd limit it to Stephen King, but like a Stephen King centric podcast. I love his son too is brilliant. I don't know if you've read any Joe Hill or if you know any, but those, and part of it is I'm from Maine and I've got a little bit of that, you know, that, that pride, Penobscot County, Stephen King was in Bangor. I was just North of, of Bang I actually got to meet him. That was the coolest. That's the best oh. thing. So this was a uh, humble brag, but that, like my baseball career, my, my high school baseball career ended at Mansfield stadium, which was the, the field that Stephen King built. So he built a major league quality field for high school kids in Maine to play baseball on. And it was the senior game. And I lucked into getting the MVP because I, I pitched and I pitched behind a kid who was throwing 98. And I did not throw 98. And so <laughs> the, the other team didn't couldn't time me up. And so I was getting changed after the game. And I, I just they'd given me my the MVP trophy. And, and all of a sudden the groundskeeper comes in. He says, Hey, Mr. King wants to meet you. And I was kind of like, What do you what do you mean? And he drags me out of the dugout. And there's Stephen King. Wow. And he shakes my hand and congratulates me. And I just like this is probably the closest I'll ever get to being a great writer, but it was so, so that I think that would be my podcast. I would, I would do the, the Stephen King, maybe I'd tie in Joe Hill, his son, but I, I love those books. I don't always like the stories. Some of his stuff is just out there, but his writing, it doesn't matter. It's so good. That is an awesome story and a, and a great way to, kind of cap off this show and, and bring it back to, 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 <laughs> you know, finding out about, but okay. Before we go, Zach, I want you to tell everybody where they can find you, what stuff you have going on, all that fun stuff. I am at tacit assassin 13 on Twitter. I podcast with the dynasty dummies with at J Mike check. We usually record on Thursday nights, nine 30. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel, but there are only about 60 people who know that that exists. So <laughs> now that you're here, count yourself uh, lucky or unlucky, depending. You have to look at my mug. Uh, and I also do the Dynasty Grind on Wednesday nights at 930 with Peter Howard and Russ Fisher over on DLF. Although I think DLF sometimes knows I'm there. I'm, I'm kind of the guy on the couch on that podcast. Like I'm not officially on that. I don't, I don't work for DLF. I just show up to hang out with Peter and Russ. So, that sounds like a party right there. That Absolutely. Sounds, that sounds like a party. All right. So please go check that out. Please check out everything that Zach has 
going on right now. Make sure you check out Dynasty Dummies because it's an OG and it's a wonderful podcast. And also make sure that you come back next week for another episode of Get Real with Casey Kasem. And remember to stay rad. 